safe action. Yeah. And just take the time to make sure that you are honoring the job that you're doing. You're blessing it with the way in your attitude and the way you're doing it. At work, Carl, I know if you think about it, which is the better job? The one that you put your heart and soul into or the one, I hurry up and get this done. Oh, absolutely, heart and soul. Yeah. I remember talking to uh, John Owens once on the show. He, he makes his cup of coffee, and oh, he yeah. puts these beautiful designs in them. It's terrific. I said, tell me what happens, though. We were talking about prayer. I just listened to this show. The other posted it, too. And we were talking about prayer and how to pray effectively. And I said, you can't go into prayer with any kind of demands and anger in your heart and, and, and really expect the results you want other than to get bent and get rid of that stuff. But if you want to do, if you're praying for someone and you want God to really touch them and change them and help them, then you've got to get the anger out of the way. You've got to get the hurry out of the way. You got to do it in a way that is really heart and soul into what you're saying and how you're praying for that person. Like Tanya and I, did she tell you that we prayed for you over the phone, Carl, when you went into the hospital that day? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we did because all of a sudden, I'm, you know, uh, Bob tells me you call. I was sleeping, and he says Carl's really frantic. He's like something's wrong, and so uh, not seeing you on the. Uh, uh, in media, the internet, the Facebook, yeah. and so I texted Tanya. I said, "Tanya, call me. What's wrong with Carl?" And so she calls immediately, and uh, so we did. We prayed for you over the phone. That's nice. And of course, yeah. when you pray nice. together for two or three, or gather together in my name and agreeing upon things, and that's where your prayer is very powerful too. Back to casting out into the deep. So, if you want to cast out into the deep to change. To get down to the depth of what's causing you to stay with bad behavior, take the time to do the job right and spend time to draw away. And, you know, like he had, they had to go out into the deep. Picture the boat. They're in shallow water. Yeah. Had to depart from that shallow water. Oh, there's an imagery right there. The shallowness of the world. Uh, think about it, Carl. Get away from worldly, shallow, uh, frivolous type behavior and the attractions of the world. Get away from that so that you can be away where it's quiet, so that God can take you deep to catch and bring up in the net what needs to be brought up out of the inner spirit that needs to be brought out. Uh, whenever we're doing inner healing prayer, there's so many times the Holy Spirit will say there a word. Are you? I'm getting an image of something here, and it looks like this. Something as simple as a spider on the floor. Uh, I didn't see a spider. I saw a shadow that looked like a spider. But saying, uh, is somebody here got a fear of uh, spiders? And oh, it brought out something that was subconsciously buried. You know, oh yes, and. Uh, there's so many things that subconsciously you've got it buried so deep you don't want to see it to begin with, but you have to see it to get it up and get it out of there to recognize, oh, this is why I do what I do and why I act the way I do. This is why I'm still eating too fast. This is why I'm still multitasking. This is why I'm still controlling everything around me because if I don't have it controlled, then this is going to happen to me if I don't have everything in right order. There's, every, everybody's got a behavior of some kind that protects them from hurt and pain. Everybody has a behavior of some kind that is protecting them from hurt and pain and fear of being hurt again, being rejected. Uh, we will avoid, old, you know, we'll just avoid certain situations because we don't want to experience the pain and the memory of what that situation did to us before. Case in point, uh, somebody in a relationship really hurt us real, real bad, so we're going to avoid that type of person. 
Uh, case in point, uh, Daddy or Mama was a very angry, ugly person, and we were very afraid afraid of them. They were very dictator type wise, or they were too strict or something like that. So we don't want that kind of person in our life. So we're going to try to find somebody that's not like Mama or Daddy, and end up with a loser. <laughs> You know, not necessarily a loser, but end up with, really, uh, it, you still end up with somebody that may not look like your dad or your mom, but you, for some reason you still draw back into that same situation. It's really funny how that does that, works out. Irony of it all. What you, I think is the, what you try to avoid or run away from, you still it's going to be right there, following right behind you. Have you found that out to be true, Carl? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You think you left your baggage behind, but you're carrying it with you wherever you go. It's not the person or the problems of the past that have done the number to you. It's how you are still feeling, and you haven't forgiven, you haven't let go, that these old behaviors just cling to you. That's why always in the scripture there's this example of some type of you have to put on a there has to be a new wine skin that you put the love of Jesus into otherwise it just leaks out the old wine skin just breaks there's this get off your security mat do you want to be well then you have to rise up walk and get up off that mat uh the guy that was lowered through the roof went to great extremes to get to Jesus that's casting into the deep right there if you want to change, if you want a new life, if you want new results in your life, if you want to get accomplished what you're setting out to do, you got to get drastic and you got to go to the extreme and making sure you get it, get to what you want with the help of God and grace of God. Put that prayer life in there first. But he, you know, and then God said to him, your sins are forgiven. Get up off your mat. And walk and go on. Your sins are forgiven. You're healed. There's a key word right there. Forgiveness. Essential. You cannot be well. You cannot have miracles in your life. You cannot have really great things happening into your life. As long as you are holding on to grudges. And and you're not forgiving people. Still, you're angry at your life. You're angry at God. If you want to change, you've got to dig deep and make sure you have forgiven all, starting with God to begin with. If you want to dig deep and get all of that out, forgiveness is essential. And what a great, wonderful time of year to be starting this. This, in our life, in our religion, is uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. starts the 40 days of Lent. And we do this 40 days because Jesus went into the desert for 40 days. He went, he, it was a necessary. And that in itself is a good concept here. I challenge each and every one, myself included, and Carl, to start a 40-day walk of going out into the deep and doing things that change our life. And here's one of the things that uh, uh, I shared it, so you should be able to find it on my home page. Starting with February 10th, it had a, like, the first day, human. Reflect on what it is to be human. And journey, examination, empty, gratitude. It has one word, one word that could help take you into change and to a realization of what is needed in your life. Uh, March 1st, healing, emptiness, second, seeds, restored, focus, beloved, confession. I'm just getting all these words that are down here that will help you focus on that word for that day of Lent. And I think that's a really good idea. Go on my homepage if you want to go find it, anybody. Elizabeth Thomas. And you'll see on my homepage... You can't. It, you'll know it's me because there's a picture of Jesus staring back at you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Carl? Yep. Have you ever been to my homepage? Yep. Yep. <laughs> there's this picture of Jesus staring at you. So there's 40 days. We 
ask God to take us to where we need to go to lead us and guide us each day, one day at a time. Don't, whatever you do, you're setting yourself up for failure if you want to say, oh, I'm going to do without this or I'm going to do without that to change. That's setting yourself up for failure if you think in terms of 40 days. But if you think of one day, like uh, I was, to things in my life that I thought would find it very hard not to have in my life, and that salt, the other one is uh, the creamer, powdered creamer in my coffee. This is just little stuff. But it hit me today. The Holy Spirit just said, hey, could you give up that for one day? I said, yeah, I could. So each day, the Holy Spirit was inspiring me to give up something different each day. But give it up as a way of sacrifice for uh, God and to also discipline yourself. This is what it's doing to you. It's disciplining you to strengthen you. Think in terms again, Carl. We always have to go back to the athlete, (laughs) the musician, the actor, the comedian. Anybody who wants to do things and do it well, they have to persist in their practice. They have to persist in working hard at accomplishing their goals if they want to be somebody that accomplishes what they set out to do. You are not a Super Bowl team without all the hard work that goes behind it. Right, Carl? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, So 40 days. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I challenge you. I challenge you for 40 days to cast into the deep by each day. See if you can find one person that the Holy Spirit will lead you to that you can smile at and look at, say a silent prayer for, say a kind word to them, notice them. And let them think, you know, say something to them that makes them feel like, oh, somebody thinks I've got something good about me. I like the, I like that look on you. I like that hat on you. I like this, uh, you know, that, you know, there's so many different ways that we can say something nice to someone that is a sincere compliment. And the Holy Spirit will guide you with this if you'll just let them. So each day, choose to say something and do something nice for someone each day for the next 40 days. Take a good, long, hard look down deep inside and say, Lord, show me something about myself that I need to let go of. Forgive someone, starting with yourself. Forgive someone that you have not forgiven yet and you still have a grudge against or an anger against. Each day. And trust me, you may think, oh, I've forgiven them all. All right, let me tell you an example of this. My mother in law uh, uh, has, God rest her soul, she's dead. She's now in heaven, I hope. <laughs> uh, if not there, she's going to get there someday because I believe in purgatory. But anyhow, she, every time we were around, we would, after about a week of being together, we would get into a horrendous fight horrendous fight and it would build up over a week number one she had raised my stepson till age nine and then when i married bob i hey you're coming to live with us now i'm going to be your mommy (laughs) that wasn't the greatest ideal right there should have known well i we should have wished that was wiser but anyhow uh so we'd always get these horrendous fights and one time i said lord why 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 are we fighting like this, and what can I do to stop them? Because I don't, I don't like it. I don't like that we do that. And he said, he inspired me, just as I took your sins on the cross, and I forgave you, and I washed them clean, I want you to take your mother-in-law's faults and the things that you wish she wouldn't do and her anything you think is sin in her or bad in her, and I want you to ask me forgiveness for them. So I'm driving home from work, um, and I'm going, yeah, da, 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 yeah, she's this, she's that. Forgive me, Father, for being so this. Forgive me, Father, for being so uh, opinionated. Forgive me, Father, for being so pushy. Forgive me, Father, for this and that and so forth. At some point, I'm going, oh, my gosh, they are my sins. I act just like her. And that's, you know, and he says, Hello. <laughs> 
And so if you think you have completely forgiven everybody, then start bringing up the things that you...